What's good, everybody? It's your boy, Chris Sage. I'm standing outside the office of Anthony White, critically acclaimed author of Ghetto Girls 1, 2, and 3. He's also involved in the SLR magazine and owns his own publishing company. We're going to go upstairs and talk to him and find out how we got to start in the game, what he's working on currently, and why urban literature is at the standpoint that it is right now. It's your boy, Chris Sage. And remember, if you didn't hear from the urban book source, then it ain't the source. Yeah, urban book source. And that buzz quick. What's good? It's your boy Chris H here. You're watching Urban Book Source TV. Now I'm sitting here in the building with Anthony White. Anthony White was popping, man. No doubt. Good to be on this Urban Book Source Network. That's what's up. It's all what's good. Up? Yo, you all doing your thing. We got Eric Gray in the house. We got Blaine Martin. You know, Eric Gray is a great author, Mr. Prolific. Eric Gray, crave all, lose all, go cop that. <laughs> so I want to ask you a little bit about your magazine. How did you get to start with SLR? Street Literature Review is a concept of me and my business partner, Jason Claiborne. We were sitting around. We were just trying to figure out how best to utilize what we have as skills to bring the genre, to uplift the genre, to push it, mm -hmm. push it, you know, pour some water on our little plant that's going on in the garden and uh, we came up with it as, a, as like the voice of the genre like we'll try to expose it we'll try to get it out there to areas where the books are not mm. uh, sold or even seen and then we try to keep it PG-13 so that everyone you know little kids can read it you know, no curse and so on mm. and so forth and we try to teach a lesson we try to you know we try to develop ideas we got legends we got uh, in the first issue Shannon Holmes came through the great Don, he wrote Book Game 101, and, and, and we got Eric Gray, Kwan, we feature those two young prolific writers because that was a thing to do. And then we have a backdrop comparing them to the great ones like the legends, Donald Goins and Chester Himes in this issue. Uh, next issue we feature all ladies, and, and that concept was just me and my business partner again, we figure, you know, plus we had letters from people like, oh, it seemed like it was heavily male written in that issue, so we try to do some, uh, shine some light on the ladies, and we, we had great interviews and we had great response from all of them, and we just would like to thank everyone, including Nakia. Uh, Nakia Murray, <laughs> and she was instrumental in, in also putting some of the interviews together. So when did it start? What year did this come out? The first issue came out in uh, the nice. summer, uh, summer of 07, the late summer of 07, just before the, uh, right after the book fair, but we had a, we we had had a prototype at the book fair, but we had the real thing like in October, the real thing came out in October, September, October, and it came out as this issue, Street Literature Review magazine and it was great so how do you great. promote for it how do you get it to the masses right now we are trying to develop a deal we're trying we haven't completely developed a deal but we're trying to get it into all the newsstands via a deal through a distributor um, so that's ongoing and you know uh, it, it basically right now it's available in your bookstores and the newsstands certain newsstands of course Which in New York City uh, all the bookstores Ma Pa bookstores you mean Ma Pa in the independent stores like how we sell books to the mm -hmm. vendors the street vendors have it yeah. Okay. Okay. So right now it's just the introductory phase, um, but our response from from the from the the, the prison system, or the brothers and sisters who read and who are writers and who are poets and so on, they've been like it's just been tremendous. It's, you know, so we're encouraged by that to continue, and most people see it as you know coming of age thing, sort of like the story behind the books, mm -hmm. you know, so we're doing it and we're going to keep doing it, we got a good issue planned for the next issue and um, we're going to feature writers and stories about writers and story about writing and we're going to continue to try to entertain and show you how to improve if you're in the industry so it's going to work for the outsiders and the insiders in the industry. So what is your core belief structure behind SLR? What is, what is your objective? Basically to teach and entertain and uh, uh, try to get the kids involved in reading and, and, and writing and, and comprehension. That's important. That's basic. Um, and then basically just build a, a business, a, another black business, a black art business based on black art. That's mm -hmm. simple. You know, like we're not trying to redo anything. It's a niche genre and it's growing. So hopefully we'll grow with it. You know. 